So let's move on in the last few minutes. Let's talk about um, 1D steady state conduction. So again, we're, we're going to go through the class starting, at, uh, starting from scratch and kind of going up to the more advanced topic. So this part will probably be review for those of you who had trans heat transfer before, but it's probably good to review. I know it's good for, for me to review once in a while. Um, so let's talk about 1D steady state conduction. First of all, what do we mean? There's a lot of qualifiers there on the word conduction. So what does that, what does that mean? Some of it's obvious, but uh, let's, let's think for a moment. So we have uh, drawn here, we have like a washer and you have these, these hatch marks on the washer on the top and bottom. That indicates that that surface is well insulated. There's no heat transfer across that surface, which we'll call uh, adiabatic. So if you haven't heard that, it's a adiabatic, uh, which means that there's no gradient. There's no temperature gradient in that direction. So when we say that there's 1D conduction, that means that the only temperature gradient that exists is in one dimension. Now that could be vertically, but in this case there's insulation, so there's, a, there's going to only be a temperature gradient in the radial direction. So we would write T as a function of potentially the radius, uh, maybe the cylindrical coordinates, theta and uh, Z. Oops. Right. Here we've decided because it's 1D, we, we really only want to pick one of them, um, so maybe those two would go away. The temperature profile might also be changing in time. So uh, we could theoretically write temperature as a function of time. But uh, we were saying we're just concerning ourselves with steady state, meaning there is no uh, importance of time here. So we will only write uh, equations as a function of one, one dimension here. Uh, in this case, the example is t as a function of r. All right. Uh, if you have a problem where it's T as a function of time, temperature as a function of time, that's still not 1D conduction. That's just a lump capacitance, just to distinguish that. OK. Uh, what else? So how do we go about solving problems where you have 1D steady state conduction? Uh, well, we go back and we will uh, do control volume analysis, uh, look at the heat flow in and out of our control volume, and develop equations for that. So let's write out a few steps. Uh, step one for solving these problems is define a differential control volume, which I will abbreviate C dot V, control volume. Uh, so if we look at this, uh, this example over here, let me zoom in, we would draw a control volume. So first, the question is, where, what is my control volume, right? It, would I draw it like this? Uh, would I draw it like like this, or would I draw it like this? Let's say one, two, or three. Yeah. One, two, or three. <laughs> three, three. Right. And why is that? So think about that when fixing this. Right, so why, why am I going to draw the control volume this way? It's because the only temperature gradient is in the radial direction. So I could, I could have infinite, an infinite control volume in, in Z, in the Z coordinate, uh, because I don't care about any, any gradient in that direction. OK, uh, let's say, so now, now we're at some position here, R, some radius R. And we have to look at the heat that's flowing in and out of this control volume. So I have heat flowing in. We'll say that's Q dot at R. I have heat flowing out. That's Q dot at R plus dr. What else could be happening? I could have, I could have in this control volume, I could have energy generation. Right? I could have um, an internal energy change, so du dt. But I've said it's steady state, uh, 1d. And we'll just assume that it, there's no generation. Right? We'll deal with that later. So both of these go away. So the only thing that's happening here is you have heat transfer in from the left and out from the right. And that's it. Right? So it's a really simple problem. All right, so we have our control volume. Step two is uh, we will do the first law of thermodynamics.
do an energy balance, right? Uh, the energy balance generally is anything coming in plus anything that's generated has to be equal to anything that's going out plus anything that's stored. Right? So I go back and I'll, I'll look at what's coming in. Well, that is q dot r. And what's going out, that is q dot at r plus dr. Right? So that's our very, very simple energy balance. So we'll try to get through, let's see, I'll try to get through one more step here before we wrap up. So steps three and four, we're going to take the limit as uh, dr approaches zero. And then we're going to um, substitute the rate equation. So let's just move through this because I think it's mostly review. Uh, all right, so our limit as uh, dr approaches 0 uses its definition. So that is dq dot r dr is equal to the limit as dr goes to 0. q dot r plus dr minus q dot r over dr. So we'll use this definition. Uh, assuming all the, the, the whole time that dr is vanishingly small, right, it's going to zero, uh, but we can still do algebra using this equation. So let's solve this equation for q dot r. Uh, sorry, solve it for q dot r plus dr. That gives us uh, q dot r plus dr equals q dot at r plus dq dot r dr times dr. Right. Physically, what this is saying is heat coming out equals heat that comes in plus any change in heat over that dr space. Right? Um, let's see. OK, so now we can, we can use this equation, uh, this part of the equation here. And let's sub that, sub that back into our, our energy, energy balance up here at the top, right? this, thing, this thing up here. Uh, and we end up with the following equation, q dot r equals q dot r plus dq dot r dr times dr. q dot r appears on both sides, so that goes away. We're left with uh, dq dot r dr times dr equals 0. Okay, Because uh, this equation equals 0, I can cancel out that dr, just divide it out. And we end up by, uh, by the equation dq dot r dr equals 0. OK? So this is, again, physically, it's just saying heat, the amount of heat that's transferred in the r direction is not a function of position. Like, it doesn't change. What's coming in is equal to what's going out. OK? So we'll leave it there and finish up uh, the rest next time. Thanks, everyone.